All right, welcome to this lesson on how to increase serotonin levels naturally or how to calm down and stay calm because often we want a way to sustainably stay in a, a tranquil state of mind like what we train in meditation formally but it's easy to get agitated here and there and serotonin is this neuromodulator this chemical in the brain that's been associated with contentment and calm so a neuromodulator you can think of there's a few of these like dopamine is one that a lot of people have heard of uh, norepinephrine acetylcholine and one way to think of these is it's like they're activating certain playlists in the brain and i'll credit uh, dr andrew huberman with this analogy it's like they're hitting play on certain neural circuits and so we can think of serotonin as hitting play on the more calming playlists. So serotonin is the chemical of enough. It's the chemical of satiation, and it, it biases the brain, the neural circuits, towards feeling comfortable, feeling like we have enough. This is a, a generalization, of course. There are many functions of serotonin. In fact, there are at least 14 separate serotonin receptors in the brain, so it does different things. Like there's the famous 5-HT2A receptor, which is what psychedelics, many psychedelics bind to, and it's associated with this mystical experience. And that, that's a different role that serotonin plays. But here we're talking about generally ways that serotonin can help us calm down. So I just want to emphasize that while there is a clear link between serotonin and contentment, as many roles related to reward assessment, impulsivity, harm aversion, decision-making. So this is a complex neuromodulator, and we're going to simplify. And this is, so this is just a very simplified kind of oversimplification, but there's six ways that we can potentially naturally increase serotonin levels in the brain. The first is through positive emotions. This is very interesting because it suggests a two-way interaction kind of feedback loop where both positive emotions can potentially elevate serotonin and likewise serotonin elevates positive emotions. So that's part of what you're, you've been doing in this course, especially when you recall a happy memory. This is one way based on a study that linked the, this kind of two-way street between mood elevation and serotonin. The second way is through skylight. Bright light exposure is very good for us and the sky produces about 10,000 to 25,000 lux, uh, which is a measure of, of light on a clear day. And getting about 30 minutes of that in the morning is, is very beneficial and potentially elevates serotonin. Even on very cloudy days, the skylight produces about 1,000 lux, which is about 10 times brighter than indoor overhead lights. So it's important to get outside and not just, not just view any bright light. The third way is through exercise. The fourth is through a healthy diet. The precursor to serotonin is tryptophan. This is found in foods like nuts and seeds and eggs. So having a balanced diet can help make sure we have healthy levels of serotonin. But fifth, there was a link found between generosity and serotonin. So pharmacologically enhancing serotonin levels in the brain was found to increase altruism, this altruistic giving tendency. The chemical precursor L-tryptophan was found to increase charitable donating. So in other words, this makes sense. The more happy and calm we become, then possibly the more generous we become. This is kind of that two-way street viewed the other way. And now I'm making a leap and assuming, all right, if being more generous, or rather if Enhancing serotonin makes us more generous. It's possible that generosity, which also brings up a positive state of mind, also increases serotonin if that two-way feedback loop is there. The sixth way to naturally increase serotonin levels to help us calm down and stay calm is what you've been doing in this course, which is to meditate. Meditation is an umbrella term like exercise, which covers many different techniques. But there was one study that showed increased levels in the urine samples of 30 long-term 
vipassana or insight meditators compared to a control group. Although um, urine levels of serotonin don't necessarily indicate the levels of serotonin in the brain, this link is probably there, even though maybe the study wasn't the best design for determining it. We certainly feel more content and at ease when we take time to sit down and train our minds. And the type of meditation you've been doing here called metta is specifically bringing up a happy, positive emotion, which we've just said is also linked to serotonin levels. So this is a great way to naturally feel calm. And the great thing is you can continue to meditate all day. This is like the main takeaway that I would love to communicate in this course, which is that you can meditate all day long whenever you remember to use the four R's, to recognize what your mind is up to. Like, oh yeah, my mind is thinking about this. My mind is thinking about that. My mind is worried. My mind's distracted. My mind's happy. And then release. If the mind's in a negative, distracted state, you release that. You relish. You bring up a positive state. You might think of a happy memory or think of something you're grateful for. And you remain, you stay with that positive emotion. And I would, I would guess, I would certainly think there's a link there, just as there is between other positive states. Any positive state, I would certainly think would be linked to serotonin levels. And what's important here is not which specific chemicals are at play, is that we're creating a very balanced, happy mind. And this is going to allow you to see deeper aspects of how the mind works and gain wisdom over time and gain mental fitness. So let's go over one more time how we can use the four R's to get calm and stay calm. If we recognize that the mind is in an amped up state, like there's restlessness, it's very all over the place. Okay. First R, recognize. Second R, release. We release because we stop doing whatever's making us amped up and we relax. We get into our body and we just relax for a moment. Okay. So now we've recognized, released. Third is to relish. We bring up a positive emotion. This could be a happy memory. It could be doing something generous for somebody else. It could be giving a compliment and then just resting in that feeling, in that attitude. And then fourth is we remain. We remain in a tranquil environment, like in nature. We remain in a tranquil state of mind. And we continue to cultivate that, that state just by noticing how it feels. Gradually, this will train the mind to be in that state more and more often. Wonderful. So your daily challenge today is to recognize both ecstatic and then calm moments throughout the day. And just notice this. Notice the ups and downs. Notice which one you prefer. Notice what causes your mind to be amped up and what causes your mind to be calm. And as you get more in tune with this, you start to naturally develop mental fitness. Wonderful. I'll see you here tomorrow.